Wait a minute. You're telling me the whoopee slings were getting more strength than that? I've been wanting to test whoopee slings for five years and I'm finally doing it. Whoopee sling is an adjustable sling where you have a fixed eye on this side and an adjustable eye on this side and it can be as long as you're willing to make the tail. Now, according to Samson's instructions, this middle section has to be a certain length. And if you did actually follow the instructions, the minimum this thing would be is this long, which makes it almost unusable for half the stuff I want to do with it. But then in this other video where we tested Tufelberger's instructions on how to do Bromel Ice Splice, the thing came undone. Who is writing these things? Now what's funny is I've actually never met anybody who's followed the instructions for this part. And I have not yet tested how safe they need to be. I think I pulled on them a few times a few years ago and I was like, oh, good enough. But now we're officially going to test it. I sent 150 feet of six mil Dyneema to Jared Lojack and he spliced all these up for us. So let's go test them. This is 12 braid SK75 Amsteel Blue Dyneema from Samson, which can be spliced inside of itself. And so you can create adjustable eyes or fixed eyes or all sorts of things, including soft shackles. This is a splicing tool called a FID that's for quarter inch or six millimeter Dyneema and it is 21 times the length of what it is made for. So in this case, about five and a quarter inches. So this is a Brummel eye splice. It's a locking eye splice because you splice one leg through here and then the other leg through itself. And so it does self-lock to a point, but you still need to have some form of a berry and they recommend two and a quarter fids. And you can see here that it's not quite that many. You can see how this outer layer has to expand in order to fit the other strand. It'll shrink up when it does that. So in this case, it started out as a fit and a half instead of the two and a quarter fits that they recommend. We're gonna find out if that's a problem. But because this is a simple eye splice, you don't really have anything going for it other than the constriction itself that that Chinese finger trap provides that they say you need three and a half of these. So this middle section would have to be 18 inches long in order to be properly buried, plus, that's 31, plus six inches here more to have a proper bury here. So for quarter inch Dyneema, this literally has to be three feet long before you even get to start using it. So we have three samples of each of a one, one and a half, and two fid lengths, none of which are three and a half. And we're gonna see if any of these slip or break lower than they're supposed to. Average breaking strength of this on Samson's website is 8,600 pounds, but because this tail comes out abruptly out of the end, then it's gonna reduce the strength to 70%, they say. And so we will be happy enough if we get 6,020 pounds out of these samples here and nothing slips. 6,700 pounds. So the second one, I'm adding a marker here to see if this slips at all. So I saw it getting sucked in maybe a quarter of an inch, but it did hold. But I'm putting this around a 5 8 inch uh, shackle here and also on this side as well, just for reference of the fact that these eyes are not breaking and that this is the weak point where that comes out. Woo, that's not bad. It's predictably breaking there. That's our lowest result yet. So these are all over what Samson said would be 70% of our average breaking strength. But you can see there's quite a bit of a range just between these two right here. I should have started with the two fid berry because it's obviously gonna be strong enough. Why is that weaker? How is it that much weaker? It's a longer berry. So this one I pulsed in order to see if I can get the strands to pull more evenly. And you can typically get a little bit more stronger results out of Dyneema. And we did. You can see the pulse and you can see that we got a higher force. Okay, I really pulls the shit out of that. And uh, yep, two strands here are not broken. Highest result yet, pulsed the shit out of it. So maybe it's not the size of your splice, but how you tug it. Another thought is I'm pulsing it and it's still not coming through. It's not just a one and done, right? So like, it's not a million cycles, but it's still showing like it's, it's holding so far. So now we'll test the two fids and see if we get some crazy results. So 
So that was just a straight tug, and you can see that we got 65.85. So our Sharpie did get sucked in about a half an inch. That's uh, it's good to know. And we literally got the exact same result pulsing it. Oh, one and done poll got us higher results. You end up having more questions and answers when you do stuff like this. Now let's do a control sample to see if our eye to eye is actually getting our average or minimum breaking strengths that Samson is claiming. Let me show you what they look like. So you can see the crisscross Brummel splice point right there. And then you can see the tail going into the other part. And it comes all the way, it's a two fid splice, all the way down to here. And it tapers properly. There's nothing here. Then you can feel the taper gradually getting back up to being fully spliced again. And that is a brummeled eye to eye splice. Let's find out how strong it is. So I found on these things, if I have a good bend radius here, that it'll break where the taper is, even if it is tapered properly. What? Wait a minute. You're telling me the whoopee slings were getting more strength than that? I'm supposed to be getting this up here. Let's try pulsing this thing. Same thing, broken the taper. We got a higher result. But what I wanna know, is why it's not the minimum or even the average. These numbers are BS if you can't get them in the splices. Yes, but Ryan, they use a large diverter to test them because when you have a bigger bin radius going around the thing, it'll produce a stronger result. You're supposed to at least get 95% out of a splice. The whoopies are literally as strong as this eye to eye stuff. I never actually thought that was the case. Uh, let's do the last one. Same thing, broken the tapers. Wow, I did not even pulse that one and it got over 7,000. So we usually like to include a bonus test. Here is a two fid buried whoopee, but on the end, instead of a brummeled eye splice, we have a soft shackle, sort of. It's a single stranded soft shackle. But this way you can just loop it around something instead of having to add a connector to a Brummel die. And then of course you still have this side as a whoopee. So this is just a simple eye splice right here. You can see that's where it went in. Jared tied an overhand in it and then fed the whoopee through the eye. So then it creates this knot, which is very similar to our overhand simple soft shackle video that we've made. So if you don't like tying the button or diamond knot, you have this as an option. However, it makes the head really big, and if you don't want that, it's kind of annoying. But in this case, it's actually working because it's single strand there. And then he created a loop right there. And then he started to splice his two fids in there. The question is, is that more weak than the fact that this comes out abruptly right there? So the knot held up well, it just ripped it out of the eye. Oh, it's about half of what we should be getting. Oops, I did it again. I broke it at half and I'm not sure if it's super good enough. Oh, even less. So there's 15 data points for you guys to nerd out over. I was expecting the soft shackle to break lower and it did at 50%, but I was not expecting whoopies to be as strong as the eye to eye splices. I mean, maybe the overlap because there's such a wide range, maybe an overlap of where they would like touch, but uh, I'll make that chart nice and put it on our blog. That always goes with these videos. That'll be on our website and uh, you can look at it yourself and tell me what you think in the comments. I just think it's kind of frustrating that the number that you see on a website, you just can't take to the bank. It, it just rarely ever lines up. Like sometimes metal products are like what they say if a carabiner says 22 kilonewtons, I'm usually getting that or more, but especially soft goods, it's just all over the place. If I was a manufacturer, I mean, it is kind of hard. Like you can see that the range is really big. So what are you supposed to do? 
whatever their method is, fine. Because it's apples for apples among all the diameters they're doing. But it'd be really nice to see maybe a little bit more public information about how they achieve that. Maybe a, even a video or a description or something to where we know how they even got that number. Is it a rounded diverter? Sometimes it is eye to eye splices they're testing. I've heard from one manufacturer that they'll pull a Dyneema cord to like eight kilonewtons and then like hold it there for a while and let all the strands pull evenly. And then after it's been there for a while or they'll pulse it like I did. And after it's been there for a while, then they'll slowly pull it to just maximize the number on the website. It's just like, is if every manufacturer is doing that, you got to do that. But like, damn, that's not helpful. Not to the people who are trying to like base what diameter they need for the projects they're doing. Now, if you're not worried about the strength because you're just using it for a hammock, uh, the soft shackle thing is pretty cool. But uh, if you want to hit Jared up and have him make you some custom soft shackle whoopies or Dyneema products, He'll probably do that. I'll put his information in the description below. So I just finished editing this video and I wanted to have a candid conversation with you guys. I think the comment section could be super valuable. You've got thousands of people looking at this, not just my eyes on it, and you're all gonna have uh, some good thoughts. And I think that needs to be a valuable section of this content, is your guys' feedback on why you think it's doing things, maybe how to test stuff. Um, I break stuff better now because I have feedback like that. But um, this is mostly to address the uh, metric police. I am trying to serve the community I'm making videos for. And uh, mostly Dyneema products are measured in pounds of force or kilograms of force, not kilonewtons. So a carabiner is rated for 22 kilonewtons. So we compare all climbing gear to the numbers that you see in your climbing gear. Well, Dyneema is not like that. And so Kilonewtons is more universal, at least universally understood around the world, since that's what's on the gear and we all use it. And a lot of climbers are forced to use metrics anyways, which I think the metric system's great. However, uh, more than half my audience is Americans and they don't use the metric system. And so, well, I could put both, you say. I decided to put just the pounds of force in this video and quarter inch, five eighths, and I was using the imperial system because there's 15 points of data and you can actually lose the point of the video if you try to put pounds of force, kilograms of force on everything. And so on the website, we'll have kilograms of force in the chart right below. So in case you want that information, it is available to you. But I intentionally did not do that in this video. I kept it pure imperial. And whenever I do that, the comment section ends up blowing up with the metric police on how, how they don't understand how the metric system is better. Learn both systems, it's not that hard. I had to. So I'm asking that you keep the comment section constructive, helpful, and let's explore ideas on why we think things are breaking the way they are. If you think I should explore 30 samples of one thing and then we can uh, examine that data more detailed. If there's other ways I can pull Dyneema, you think that might get different results. But anyways, please keep the comment section positive. I was imperialistic for a reason in this video and that's to make it better for you guys. It's just to compare that the eye to eye was breaking roughly the same as the whoopies. Isn't that interesting? Thanks for watching. Cheers.